Welcome back to the Chad HD Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. Joining us on the phones right now, always a pleasure to visit with our next guest, the Deputy Communications Director for the RNC, Cassie Smedley, joining us here on the Chad HD Show. Cassie, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. Doing well. Everyone's well in my neighborhood. I hope the same to you and yours. Very good. Good. Uh, glad to hear that. Yeah, I think... Uh, uh, at least in the family, everyone's doing good. Of course, everyone's it, it's everyone's ready to go back to work, Cassie. That's the main thing yeah. is that uh, we're ready to get businesses going and get the economy going again. Mm-hmm. And, Amen. And I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I was, what I was going to ask you, you know, th- there's the you know, not everyone's focused on politics uh, every single day. You know, it's kind of take it, it has taken a back seat. Uh, to the coronavirus news every single day, but there's still politics going on. Sometimes in front of the camera, a lot of times behind the camera. For for you guys at the RNC, uh, and you have to focus on the politics of the day. And there's still a presidential election that's going on in this country. How how do you navigate the the, the conditions that we're in right now? Right. Well, it's a balancing act, um, but for our purposes. We're really grateful. You and I have talked a lot in previous conversations prior to this whole pandemic about our fundraising and how we've been training and activating over a half a million volunteers. And to have the infrastructure in place that we have, thankfully, allowed us to, within 24 hours of everything, everybody moving to work from home, we were able to switch over our system to a completely virtual system. And it's been really awesome to see that the momentum and the enthusiasm has not let up one iota. In fact, in some ways, it's increased because folks who were busy with work and other aspects of daily lives now find joining a virtual training or um, making some calls via Trump talk as a welcome relief in the otherwise new routine of the day. So it's been really cool to see everybody. And you can go to trumpvictory.com if you'd like to log on and make some calls yourself. We welcome that. But um, but there's also a part of that community where you're just checking in on folks. How are you doing? How are you feeling? And So along with those trainings, it's also a way to make sure that our neighbors and friends are still doing okay. Um, And so that's been, I think, a a welcome uh, opportunity for people as well. So it's interesting. But as you say, the show must go on. There's still uh, an election in November. And we're getting a real-time look at how our president, President Trump, and his most likely opponent, Joe Biden, um, deal in a crisis of this proportion of this magnitude. You have Joe Biden, who's hunkered down in his basement and is, you know, using four staff in four days to try and get a teleprompter running. And then you have the president who's out there every day, two hours a day in some cases, answering every question, going straight to the American people, and um, has this great team around him that is getting us the latest information so that we can do what's best for ourselves and our families and our communities. And that's what we vote on, right? We vote on who we want to be the leader of our country, and we're seeing that leadership in real time. And so while he's leading the country, we're making sure that people are getting that message on the political side. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think it does uh, say say a lot about, you know, the, the leadership from the president, but also, you know, Joe Biden, unless he's making a phone call to the president he or screwing up on, mm-hmm. on one of these podcasts yeah. or – uh, uh, TV shows, he, he's not really there. I, I mean, it seems like the the Democrats are more talking about uh, the governor of New York uh, than they are their their own presumptive right. nominee, right? Yeah, I mean, and it's interesting. They're talking about the governor of New York because we see the governor every day because New York's a hot spot. Um, but the governor has uh, found a way to, you're right, do what Joe Biden has not been able to do. Joe Biden, despite his best efforts to have this shadow response, Every day, the points he comes out with are the things the president is already doing. He says, you know, the president needs to get um, the defense products or the defense production act going. Well, he had already announced he was going to do that. Okay, the president needs to put someone from the military in charge of disseminating all the PPE. Yep, already got an admiral on the case. So yeah. it seems like all Joe Biden was able to offer is what it seems like he's tuning into the president's press briefings every day because he's only offering what the president has already said. And again, it's important, though, because we still have an election in November, and you're getting a real-time look at how 
how they're responding to this crisis. And Joe Biden's only response is to politicize it or copy the president's response. You know, and I also think, and this might be an example of putting politics aside, and and, and it's definitely, I think, a a projection of leadership from the president. But you know, you have Nancy Pelosi, obviously, who is out there criticizing the president. You have a lot of the Democrat uh, congressional members who are criticizing the president. But the folks who are working with the president every day, and two of the you know hotter spots in the United States, obviously New York. Uh, the governor there, who is who's a Democrat, not a big fan of the president, but he's worked well with the president, and the president's worked well with him. And then you look out in California, uh, a state that you know you would you know most people think of as a very liberal state. He says nice things about the president, and, and it, the the leadership is there coming from the president and showing that yeah, in this time, we we can be bipartisan and we can work together. Uh, yeah, it's a great point, and it's. It's also emblematic of what we deal with a lot is that you have the Washington establishment, including the White House press corps in many instances, whose focus is on kind of gotcha and politicization. And then the folks on the front lines and our governors and local and county officials who are saying, here's our day-to-day crisis. Here's what's happening in our world, in our neighborhoods, and here's how we, we need to utilize the resources of the federal government to assist our state efforts. And it is um, strange bedfellows. But I also love that whether it's state leadership or many of these businesses that, you know, it used to be a pariah if you did anything that perceived to be on the same page as President Trump helping the president. And now you have these businesses say, this is an all of America approach. We yeah. want to be part of the solution. Um, this isn't about politics or right or left or Republican, Democrat. This is about getting our community healthy again. And that's been really nice to see, too. And I think it's much more in line with how the majority of us live our daily lives. Yeah, yeah, a- absolutely. Uh, it, any uh, any movement on the uh, on the convention, on the national convention, or uh, as of right now, all plans are, are moving forward uh, with the uh, convention? That's right. The show must go on. We've got an awesome team there. I like to talk about Marsha Lee Kelly, who's our CEO of our convention. She was in charge of the build out of the convention in Cleveland in 2016. And if you remember, in 2016, the Cleveland Cavaliers, for the first time ever, were going to the NBA finals, but their home court was also the site of our convention. So we were really (laughs) nervous that we wouldn't have time to build it. And she was the woman in charge of all of those um, plans to make sure that the job got done. And so she's at the helm of our convention now, and I have full faith that they've got all the plans in order to make sure we have a successful convention um, in whatever form that might be. But right now, it's going to be a, a full show. Very good. Uh, Cassie, uh, stay healthy, and uh, thanks for doing a great job, and we'll visit with you again shortly. Thank you, and same to you. All right, thank you. That's Cassie Smedley, the uh, Deputy Communications Director for the RNC.